Hello and welcome to the First Right Podcast, your weekly dose of conservative news brought to you by Restoration of America. I'm your host, Hayden Ludwig, Research Director for Restoration News. You can find our work at restoration-news.com. This week, we're joined by Terry Schilling, president of the American Principles Project, which is working to protect families and roll back the transgender agenda threatening our schools. Terry, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me. I love coming on. Yeah, likewise. So your organization, APP, is lobbying artillery shells in the cultural right now. I want to talk about that. So in October, you filed a amicus briefing with the Supreme Court supporting Tennessee's ban on child sex change surgeries and the accompanying drugs. Tell us about the lawsuit and also uh, what that would mean for the rest of the country. Well, essentially, uh, we started years ago uh, investing in campaigns and elections, attacking Democrats and supporting Republicans over their insistence of pushing taxpayer funded sex change procedures on minors. And we have gotten because of that, our, our whole premise was essentially that if there was a political cavalry attacking Democrats and defending Republicans on these issues, that we'd be able to pass more laws. And it's come true in an incredible fashion. Uh, we have now achieved 25 states that are protecting kids from these types of sex change procedures and hormone treatments that sterilize them and mutilate them. And now the Democrats, because they don't have the popular support of the American people or of voters, they have to go through the courts in order to strike these down. And so our hope in this Skirmetti case, uh, it's, it's around a gender mutilation ban. Uh, these are do no harm laws. Uh, they've been passing all across the country, up to 25 states now, like I said earlier. Um, And if the Supreme Court overturns these laws and says that they're unconstitutional, well, then we we got to go right back to the drawing board. I am highly skeptical that the Supreme Court will do this. This is the same Supreme Court that gave us the Dobbs decision that overturned Roe v. Wade. And so I would be absolutely shocked if they said that states are not allowed constitutionally to protect children from dangerous and experimental uh, procedures that sterilize and mutilate our children. So I, I'm very optimistic. I'm very hopeful. Um, and um, I think it's the right way forward for this country. So 25 states is a huge number. Does that include any bipartisan support from Democrats and purple states? <laughs> well, we, we haven't really gotten any support from Democrats. There, there were a few Democrats in Texas that crossed over party lines, but Unfortunately, the Democrats ran primaries against them over uh, their votes on these bills and kicked them out of the party. Um, One of them is named Sean Terry, and she's an absolutely wonderful woman, super smart, African-American, I think out of Dallas or Houston. Uh, But she's fantastic. But now she's a Republican. She's on our side. She's helping us uh, pass these laws um, nationally now. So it's great. The more the the good, the more good people that the Democrats kick out of their party, uh, the better for all of us. Yeah, you might say they're detransitioning from the Democratic Party. (laughs) That's great. That's great. So speaking of detransitioning, let's talk about a recent paper that APP published called the Gender Industrial Complex. Um, And it does focus on the growing number of detransitioners. These are mostly young people, right, who've gone through gender transformation surgery, sex change surgeries, all the hormones and drugs. I know Chloe, Chloe Cole is one of the individuals that you highlight in there. Um, But these people have been seriously damaged, bodily damaged, mentally damaged by the left. So talk about the paper, what you guys found, but also, you know, does this show that the left is not following the science on this stuff? No, the the left is following the money. Uh, That's what they're doing. Um, my, Ah. My sneaking suspicion around the transgender industry is that it's driven by two things, Uh, a crazy progressive ideology that says that uh, men can become women and women can become men, um, and that no one should be uh, imprisoned in their own body, right? So that's craziness, number one. But two, it's turned into an industry now. And so what we did was we hired a company that does financial analysis uh, across several different industries. They do it for big tech, they do it for the hotel industry, they do it for restaurants. We asked them to look into the transgender industry and find out what the financials were, who's making the most money, how much money is being made, how, how much do these surgeries cost if you were to transition from male to female or male, female to male? Um, and the numbers we found were shocking. I'll give you three numbers. Uh, the first is four and a half billion. That, that is how much the transgender industry is right now. The second number is 1.3 wow. million. That 1.3 million is how many people in America claim to be transgender or identify as transgender. 
the next number, the last number I'll give you is $200 billion. That is the, the amount that the transgender industry will be worth if they are able to transition all 1.3 million Americans. To put that in perspective, you know, it's a very small industry right now, but it's still difficult to beat. So we've got to ramp up the pressure over the next several years while President Trump is in office and while Republicans control the House and the Senate in order to finish off this industry. Because if we allow it to get even much bigger, let alone get it get to $200 billion a year, it's going to be almost impossible to defeat. And let's just point out 1.3 million out of 350 million Americans. That's a tiny, tiny fraction. But, you know, you watch the media, you watch Hollywood movies or TV shows, you'd think these people were a third of the population, wouldn't you? <laughs> Absolutely. No, there's a... There's a, so here's the thing at why we thought it was an industry, because you're seeing it everywhere and it's a very small population, right? So what's happening mm -hmm. actually is it's not the 1.3 million Americans that claim to be trans that are making all this noise. It's the people that want to make money and they want to create new customers, new patients. And so what's happening is they're taking a portion of that four and a half billion dollars that they're making and bringing in from these surgeries and hormone treatments and they're investing it. They're investing it in lobbying. They're investing it in Hollywood. They're investing it in the culture to help change hearts and minds. And actually, they created like this sordid pipeline from our schools all the way to the hospitals to transition them. It's absolutely disgusting. And that's why President Trump's agenda is so important, because he's pledged to defund these transgender programs in schools where they confuse children about sex and put them into the pipeline. And then he's also pledged to defund and ban these sex chain procedures for minors. If we can stop it with minors, we can stop it down the road. And, and the next, uh, after once we protect minors, then we want to introduce uh, liability protections uh, for anyone that's transitioned, adult or child. You know, you you were sold a, a bill of false goods, right? This is consumer fraud, and now you're sterilized and mutilated, and they took hundreds of thousands of dollars. You know, it costs over four hundred fifty thousand dollars for a male to trans try and transition to become a female. This, this is a very wow, lucrative industry. Wow, $450,000. Yeah, it, well, and it's even more expensive that? for females. Uh, hospitals, there, so there are clinics all across the country that have opened up in hospitals, and they're in the surgical centers, but that, that's, that's a full-fledged number. That's including the pharmaceutical drugs. That's including the surgeries. It's including those two things, and that, so it's actually a smaller number than we realize, because there's a lot more that goes on. There's there's books, there's literature, there's content, you know, that they put online, there's sure. influencers now. Um, so the four and a half, that's actually on the lower end of things. It's probably a much bigger industry. Wow. And a lot of these are children's hospitals, too. I know where I live in Richmond, Virginia, there's the local children's hospital has a gender mutilation wing to it. It's it's astounding. I think part of what's so terrifying to this uh, as the most recent development in the culture war that we've been in for, what, almost two decades now is that none of us saw any of this even 10 years ago. I mean, we go back to the Obama era in 2008, 2009, this industry didn't exist, or at least it seemed like it was nascent compared to what it is today. How did it spread so quickly? Is it just the money or is it the media influence or how, how would you explain that? Well, it's a couple things. It's, it's the industry, it's the money, it's the marketing, it's, it's all of that. But what people don't realize is that um, in the wake of the LGBT movement rising, they passed all these laws across the country uh, called conversion therapy bans. And a lot of people are familiar, they hear that and they think, oh, well, we can't put, we can't, you know, connect gay kids up to uh, electrical shock therapy to get them to no longer be right. gay. We're not going to do that anymore. Every, you know, everyone supports that, including me, right? I don't want that. But what people don't talk about is, one, it's much more extensive than that. And it actually includes gender identity conversion therapy. So in all these states where they have conversion therapy bans, you're actually not allowed to talk to a child and help them accept their body and feel comfortable. So in those, those states where they have these laws, they have one path. And that is to get puberty blockers, to do cross-dressing, to do cross-sex hormones, and to get surgeries down the road. The, the trans industry has like secured their profits and their power by passing these laws. It's absolutely nefarious. It's pretty clear, too, that the T began with the LGP, LGB when you spell it out that way, right? Uh, no pun intended, of course, but that's you can really see a clear line from the movement for gay marriage, I think, all the way to this kind of um, normalization. But what really strikes me is 
they obviously have to go for kids because a 45 year old stable mentally adjusted adult is not likely to suddenly de develop gender dysphoria the way like a 12 year old would right i mean it seems pretty clear that's the manipulation that they rely on no that's right but also look you got to you got to you can't think politically so much about this you have to kind of think like a businessman right so like you mm. don't want the 45 year old dudes transitioning as much as you want the kids because you're 45 years old you might live another 40 years right and that's only 40 years of profits i can make up of you if you get them when they're young when they're eight that's 70 80 years possibly because these surgeries and hormone treatments they don't stop you once you stop taking the hormone treatments then your body starts to decline and you have other problems they have revision surgeries they go to them young because of the societal changes that it'll have but also because they can why profit for only 20 or 40 years when you can profit for 70 or 80 years it's it's all about the money for these guys so you raise a really interesting point here at a very particular time so the conservative movement just seemingly adopted this new make america healthy again push really spearheaded by rfk jr right i can see a pretty clear parallel between getting a sick 15 year old to you know, basically mutilate their bodies, become six, that they become wards of the state for the next eighty years. I think you could see a clear parallel too with all of the you know maybe vaccinations or the food that we eat or things like that. I mean, is this an, is there an overlap between these kinds of industries where it's not about making sick people better, it's about keeping them sick because that's where the money is? Do you see it that way? Absolutely. I, I think that the trans issue is a little bit different because there is an ideology here. And that ideology came out of UC Berkeley and Judith Butler. They, look, these guys, are, it's tough to understand where they're coming from, but I've read a bunch of their books and their literature. They look at you and I, you know, being men, they look at that as like we're imprisoned. We're not truly liberated because we're stuck being men and we can't do the things that a lot of women do or we can't like the things that women like. like they have a very sordid view of, of reality and they seek to break down all those barriers. What they actually want, and I know it sounds crazy, but their future is dystopian. It's like Brave New World, right? Where sex really isn't uh, connected to family or having children. It's completely separated and all your children are made in the yes. lab. And you don't have children. They're just raised by the state and they're given jobs based off of the genetics that the state decided that they needed to have, right? That's what they want. They think that you being a male and me being a male and my wife being a female, they think that that's hurting us. And that's actually hurting all of humanity uh, by being trapped in these male and female bodies. And it's, it's totally sick, but there's, that's just the one at different angles. So they, but it makes it a little bit more powerful because you have the, the ideological zealots, right? And then you have the financiers who are backing them and pushing it into our schools. It's a really deadly combo, way worse than like the junk food and the seed oil stuff that's going on. Now, I've got to think most politicians are particularly bright, especially if they're Democratic politicians, but most of them probably aren't that ideologically zealous. If you're 60 years old, you did not believe in this kind of gender ideology 40 years ago when you entered politics, for instance, or even older if you're Nancy Pelosi, right? So for most of these Democratic politicians that don't want to go along with these kinds of bans, like the one in Tennessee right now, are they just finger to the wind, feeling things out? You know, this is where my party is. I don't dare go against it because the woke Stasi will come for me. What is it when you talk to them? I think it's a lot to do with that, right? And you're seeing this play out with Tom Swozy in New York and Seth Moulton in Massachusetts. They're two congressmen that just won tough reelections. And they came out in the coming days after the election and they said, I just don't think that this is smart politics and i don't think it's good policy either. i don't want my daughter getting run over by some six foot dude 250 pounds on the soccer field and so you have that but radical. at the same time really? it's it is radical and it's it's terrible no one supports it but at the same time the transgender industry has these nefarious lies that they tell the politicians which is um which is that if you don't affirm these kids if you don't let them in the girls sports if you don't get them the sex change procedures and the, the surgeries that they'll commit suicide, right? So they actually say that these gender affirming care and gender affirming treatment, which aren't affirming at all, right? Like you're, you're mutilating your body, you're sterilizing yourself, like that's actually a bodily rejection. Um, but they say that those are necessary to keep these kids from committing suicide. And it's completely based on lies. There's no research, there's no data that actually shows that. In fact, 
the data that we have and that, that's come out in Europe and in California have all said that once uh, there's a transition in place, a medical transition, that suicidality increases, right? We know what's yes. real. We know what's, what's not, you know, and we know that men can't become women. We need to stop messing around with this. But the good news is, is that we can keep making Democrats pay a price for this in, in terms of political power. We just have to keep laying, laying the law down on them when it comes to campaigns and elections. So as a recording, we're about a week after the 2024 election. And, you know, the Republicans and the American people just delivered a gobsmacking victory against the left. How long do you think, Terry, it is before a number of Democrat politicians realize, you know, I think I'm going to choose re-election with people who don't hold to the woke ideology with transgenderism versus what the Democratic Party elites are enforcing. It seems like there's got to be a self-interest there that at some point starts to kick in where you choose, I'm going to lose re-election if I stay loyal to the party. That seems like a losing hand to me. But are we even close to that? Do you think that's in the cards in the next, let's say, two years? I think it's possible in the next four years. I think we, my goal is to keep this issue into, in the center of our elections in the midterms and then also in the next presidential. And if Republicans can win those next two issues, next two elections using this issue uh, in the campaign and making pledges to do things on this when it comes to the law and public policy, I think that's when you'll finally start to see some sanity kick in, at least some political sanity kick in. Uh, with the Democratic Party, and they'll probably back off. They'll probably treat it like the defunding the police movement, right, where they just stop mm. talking about it and stop being so open about it, but they're still going to be doing everything they can to under undercut uh, law enforcement. Interesting. Let's transition a little bit here, again, no pun intended, but talk a little bit about a related lie that the left pushes, and that's to do with book banning. Of course, no conservative really supports banning books. They're talking about covering up and getting out of the school libraries all of these insanely pornographic books. Um, we've had a number of guests on the show who've talked about that, shown examples of it. I know Restoration News has published actually some of the graphic imagery from these kids' books, and it's always funny to see how shocking it is to progressive school board members when they see the stuff that they're permitting in their own schools. You know, uh, tell us how the left was able to spin that little lie, um, you know, and doesn't that set up moderates who are buying that lie to be really seriously red pilled when they find out that the books that supposedly are being banned are actually pornographic books targeting six year olds? Yeah, look, I, I think that this is a prime fight. It's where the trans movement was opposing the trans movement was just a few years ago. People don't really want to talk about it yet. But once they see those political opportunities there, you're going to see a lot more of it. I, look, I think that the, the left was able to brand these laws that protect children from pornography as book bans because they control so much of our legacy media, right? And they just parrot these talking points that come from the Democratic Party nonstop around the clock. And, and people, the other thing that I realized is that with sex changes for kids, men and girls sports, teaching kids that men can have babies, and then putting these porn books in schools, it's like they're doing things that are so so terrible and so horrific that it's like un unimaginable like it's really tough we found in our research after we do these campaign ads in the early days people just didn't believe it was happening like we would show them the sure. pictures we would make the claims and the arguments and show the laws that they're passing and it was just so horrific that they didn't want to believe it was happening and that's what they're taking advantage of with the mainstream legacy media is people it's so bad the books are so terrible and inappropriate and obscene that people can't possibly believe that they're actually in schools. Well, imagine trying to explain to somebody 20 years ago that this would be the future. Even people on the left wouldn't believe you, most of them anyway. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's exactly right. Like, we are in this weird, like, micro dystopian America uh, that just went off the rails with Obama. I, I think a lot yeah. of this goes back to President Obama and the changes that he said. And look, Obama gave this interview after he was elected president in 2008, and he said, they asked him which president he wanted to model himself after uh, the most, and it was Ronald Reagan. That's who he said, and the, the interviewer was like, right. what? I do remember Ronald that. Reagan, like the ultimate Republican. And Barack Obama said, well, not in terms of policy, but Ronald Reagan fundamentally transformed America to the right in a way that george hw bush did it in a way that bill clinton did it right i want to have that type of transformational effect on the country but to the left 
That's essentially what he was saying. And in my golly, he, he almost did it, right? He still might have done it. We'll see if the political backlash to everything that he pushed in that first term comes to an end. But I, I'm very optimistic. I think the American people uh, had everything thrown against them. I think President Trump had everything th- thrown against them. And they still th- saw, saw through the BS and voted the right way. He won the popular vote for crying out loud. I mean, you know as well as yes. I do that. That was a, like the wildest fantasy that we could have possibly had is winning the popular vote, but that absolute not on my bingo card, madman as they say. genius. Yes. Yeah, not. Uh, but Donald Trump did it. Uh, he's a great guy, great politician, obviously, and I think he's going to be one of the greatest presidents we've ever had when the history books are written. Well, and it does seem like we're entering into a new consensus, you know, in a way that I think Obama was describing about Ronald Reagan, right? That the people are dying for unity. They're sick of these cultural war battles. And a lot of people who who hate the cultural war battles don't realize they have to be finished. They have to be won. You can't just put them on pause, right? I mean, that's what the American Revolution was. You couldn't just set aside the differences between the loyalists and the patriots. You had to resolve those things. It does feel like, though, that was a serious step towards this final re- resolution. I, I, I want to put a pin in that, though, and talk a little bit of this. We're talking about national decline, basically. A big part of this is the military. You know, and Trump ran on, look how bad our military is in large part. Um, and a lot of that is the DEI policies. And part of the DEI policies is putting transgender men, calling them women, and putting them in high places in command of our woke military forces. And you just look at the people that Trump has already nominated, Pete Hegseth for Secretary of Defense, Matt Lohmeyer to be on a task force to go after the woke policies across the military. I mean, this is clearly signaling that the next four years are not going to look like anything of the last decade or so. Um, you know, what do you see as the way we fight back with this in the military? Well, you've got to go back to merit-based standards, right? No more DEI, no more targeting people based on things and qualities that really don't matter. The military is for killing bad guys that want to destroy our country and imprison all of us and take over our lives. And that's the only thing that we should consider. Right. It, you want the best war fighting uh, machine that you can possibly build. And that does not mean taking into consideration anything stupid like race, sexual orientation, gender identity or any of this stupid stuff. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, green, yellow, whatever. If you can kill the bad guys and you can pass the physical fitness tests, then we need you in the, the armed services and uh, fighting for our, our, our country and our children. Um, and, and we'll take you, but they, they got to go back. And I look, I think Pete, he- Pete Hegseth is a fantastic pick for this. He's not going to suffer all of the bureaucracy and all of this, the garbage that the, the Defense Department has been putting up with are putting us through our last several years with the transgender surgery from for, for soldiers. And look, the thing is, we interviewed Donald Trump for our documentary called The Culture War. It's about um, the, the consequences of a woke war machine. And, and how Afghanistan turned into a debacle because they were distracted from winning the mission at hand and they were waging a culture war. And President Trump That's said right. very, something very smart about the transgender surgeons in the military. We asked him why he, he banned them. He said, well, it's very simple. I talked to generals. I talked to everyone. I, I looked at the regulations and the guidelines for the military. And you can't be on drugs. And these people are on lots of drugs. They're on hormones every <laughs> single day. You know, if you can't be, you know, diabetic and on insulin in the military, then you can't be transitioning to another gender and on cross-sex hormones. It's that simple. Yeah, exactly. You don't want invalids on the front lines, in other words. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's fascinating. You know, I, I do agree with you. I think Trump's massive win last week does change everything. Final questions as we close out here. So over the next let's just say two years before the midterm elections, what does the Republican Congress, what can President do, uh, Trump do to pass laws that help what you're trying to do in the states right now? Is this executive orders? Is this national legislation to ban these kinds of gender uh, transformation surgeries? What can we do? Well, I'll divide it up into two things, public policy and politics. What we need to do is we need to secure President Trump's three executive orders to save girls sports, defund these transgender and DEI programs in schools and uh, defund and ban sex change procedures for minors. We've got to do that. And still in the realm of policy, we have to get the Senate and the House to hold votes on these three laws. We have to do what we can. We have to get the senators, the Democrats on the record on whether or not they support protecting children and girls sports. 
right? We have, so that's, that's the public policy angle, and we have to hold these votes and continue to build from there. But secondarily, we have to continue the political momentum. We have to, we, you know, APP uh, spent over $18 million this cycle, or this election, right? It's an enormous election. Republicans across the country spent $215 million attacking Democrats on these transgender issues. We have to keep up the political momentum here. We can't go away because that's when they'll think that they can get away with this stuff again and they'll be stronger and bigger than ever. So we've got to keep up the, we got to get the policy gains and actually deliver what we promised the American people we would do. We have to make sure that we're investing in the Virginia governor's race and the, and the state house on these issues. We have to keep the political momentum alive because if that goes away, all of the pol public policy wins that we've had over the last several years are, are very much at risk. Terry Schilling, appreciate you joining the show. Yeah, thank you so much. We'll talk soon. And let me thank you folks for tuning in and supporting conservative voices like Terry's working to expose the truth about the rot spreading through this once great country. Remember that it's only by working together and by praying together that we can restore the United States of America to greatness under almighty and sovereign God. I'm Hayden Ludwig. Join us next time as the battle rages on. First Right, a new kind of news summary without the liberal slant. Every morning, in your inbox, always free. Subscribe by texting First Right to 30161. That's First Right, all caps, one word, to 30161.